Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture reading come from Philippians 4, chapter, verse 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passed all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good, report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. May the Lord have blessed the reading and hear his word. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, our Father in heaven, we come this morning once again. We come, Father, we bow our heads, thanking and praising you for each and every blessing you've given us to be here. <clears throat> we thank you, Father. We thank you for another great day. And we thank you for waking us up this morning to start us on our way. We thank you for being with us in traveling grace as we travel to and from over the dangerous highway. We thank you, Father. We thank you for being with us down through the year. And we thank you for bringing us thus far. We thank you for watching over us. And we thank you for our health and strength. We thank you for the love you gave us on the cross. We thank you, Father. We thank you for taking care of us in all our trials and tribulations. We thank you for the joy that you bring in our hearts and our minds. We thank you for being a father to us. We thank you for bringing us out, being with us in our service here this morning. And we give you honor and the glory and the praise. My God, we pray, Father, that you bless those who desire to be here this morning but not able to come. And bless all mothers on this Mother's Day. Bless our families and sick and shed in. Those that lost their loved ones in many ways. Bless our country and bless our government. And we all could come together on one accord. Bless our speaker here this morning. Bless the minister, bless the deacons, and bless us all. Almighty God, we pray, Father, that you be with us here this morning as we wish and pray your mighty name. Watch over, stand by. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, everybody in this room, let's give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers here on today and watching. We're here to give you praise and worship. Here's a song that you can join in with us. Thank you. 
Happy Mother's Day. Amen. We greet you in the grace of God and the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have in the programs before you the announcements for the week. And I do want to take a moment this morning to emphasize a few of the announcements. One, the matrons want you to know, uh, to want to say Happy Mother's Day again with the tokens that they have placed in your hand. If you are a mother and you have not received a gift from our matron ministry, uh, please let it be known before leaving the sanctuary because they want you to know how much we appreciate our mothers here at Greater St. Paul. We're thankful for those that participated with us on last week as we shared with New St. Mary. What a wonderful representation from Saint Greater St. Paul was there. Amen. Our choir did a knockdown job. Amen. Our officers and members were, um, were wonderful in your support. And how about that meal associated with our forever young last week? Didn't we have a time in the Lord? Amen. We're going to have to let Sister Pam know when she comes back that we, uh, we had a great fellowship uh, with our forever young. We have made a call uh, a couple of times. We need a few more volunteers to help serve some of the ministries here. And if you have an hour here or there, please let the office know we need to get our volunteer list uh, populated so that we can better serve our members here at Greater St. Paul and the kingdom for which we serve. Will you say amen? amen. You may have noticed in the, um, in the, on the web page and then sometimes here on the screen, our technical ministry has started a business of the month. Each month we will celebrate one of the businesses of some of our church members or their associates. And I think this month is Brother Zach's lawn service. Amen, Brother Zach's lawn service. As we promote these businesses, uh, there it is, Bless the Business Campaign. That's what it is. Amen. This week is Lewis Lawn Care. And we ask as you observe these, um, uh, these advertisements that you do all you can to support those businesses and get word around that we're trying to support our community in various endeavors. Again, we are happy this month to support Lewis Lawn Care. Will you say amen? amen. And then give our technical ministry a great big hand clap. Thank you. <laughs> amen. Innovative ideas. Our youth department is just having a wonderful time. I hate that they were so successful without me last week, but I'm going to catch them this week. We're praying, amen, for our kickback Wednesdays. They're having a mighty time in the Lord. And again, if you have a few moments to give support, um, to any of our ministries, please let it be known. We need each and every one that will work together with us here at Greater St. Paul. Will you say amen? amen? One more announcement. Next Sunday, we will celebrate the Iron Dunn, Dr. George E. Smith uh, Scholarship Endowment, um, and our graduates will be capped and gowned and will be represented in our service. We're looking for a wonderful time in our state's rally. As a matter of fact, I see a few of our graduates here this morning. We are so very proud of you. Matter of fact, will you just stand prematurely? All of our graduates for this year, would you give them a great big God bless you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you. We are so very proud of you and thankful for your, um, amen, your support here at Greater St. Paul. It's time now we worship God by the presentation of our tithe and offering. We learn in the word of God that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Will you say amen? amen. And that God loves a, a cheerful giver. Our officers have come to prepare the table. We ask that you now stand and face the walls. Follow the direction of the ushers from the rear.
Let's pray. Father God, bless us all. And bless the one that gave. Bless the one that didn't have, but still desired to give. Then you pray, man. Thank God. Amen. Before our choir comes back to us, we want to just um, induce the atmosphere a little bit um, by making sure that you know that you are welcome to worship God here at Greater St. Paul. If you don't mind, will you be kind and look across the sanctuary, find somebody that you haven't spoken to already? Go shake their hand and give them a hug and tell them, you are welcome to Greater St. Paul. Missionary Baptist Church, you are welcome to Greater St. Paul. Missionary Baptist Church, you are welcome to Greater St. Paul. Missionary Baptist Church, amen, amen, amen. Everybody is welcome to Greater St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church You are welcome to Greater St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church You are welcome to Greater St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church Amen Amen, amen. Everybody is welcome to Greater St. Paul. Missionary Baptist Church, you are welcome to Greater St. Paul. Missionary Baptist Church, you are welcome to Greater St. Paul.
Amen. Come on, let the church say amen. amen. Once more, will you give this music ministry a hand clap of appreciation for the wonderful song service. Thank you, brother officers, for the wonderful devotion that you shared and I miss. We thank God for Reverend Smith and Sister Smith. Thank God for Reverend McDaniels and Sister McDaniels. Thank God for all of our officers and members. Thank God for these ushers that labor uh, in our midst, the technicians. Praise God and thank him for all of us that join us by way of the social media. Thank God for Sister Franklin. And, amen. And to all my father's children, a tremendous blessing to be here. I was informed that I missed a invitation from Brother Chase Davis to his graduation. I didn't get the notice. And we do want to thank Brother Davis for the graduation and salute the Davis family for, uh, amen, for his graduation. I want to invite you this morning, my brothers and sisters, to a passage of scripture that is recorded in the first book of the Kings. First book of Kings, Kings, the book of Kings, and we want to invite you to chapter three. We are. Don't plan to labor long this morning. No, it's Mother's Day, and I'd rather you get a chance to spend some time with your mother and you, with your family. God knows I wish that I could. Um, amen, and I celebrate with you as you do. Uh, uh, but there is a word from the Lord that is recorded here in this third chapter of the first book of the Kings. I want to invite your attention there and solicit your prayers as we look at a few verses, beginning in verse 16, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. These words are recorded, and those that can, will you be, please stand with us as we honor the word of God and our reading. Then came two women that were harlots. They came unto the king stood before him and the one woman said my lord I and this woman dwell in one house and I was delivered of a child with her in the house and it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also and we were together there was no stranger with us in the house save we too in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thy handmaiden slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, The one saith, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is dead, and my son is living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. Amen. 
this passage of scripture and for a few minutes I want to talk about the magnificence of motherhood. Pray with me if you will as we think on those thoughts, the magnificence of motherhood. Psalm 19 and 1, David says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Uh, so this psalm starts off with one of the many metaphors that David, the psalmist, will use over his tenure to describe the attributes of God. He says the heavens themselves, they declare, they describe, they depict the glory of God. In another psalm, Psalm 8, David says, when I consider thy heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, David says, when I look at what my God has done, that makes me say, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the point is that David is suggesting that creation itself can cause you to reflect on how awesome God is. There are also things, my brothers and sisters, within the creation that demonstrate how wonderful, how powerful, and how intriguing God is. Clearly, one of those things is the magnificence of motherhood. Well, not only have the flower shops sold out, Amen. not only have the restaurants been all booked up, <clears throat> but today, my brothers and sisters, all over this country, houses of worship will be full, filled and, you know, the pulpits will provide a platform for preachers to talk about mothers. Well, can I suggest to you that perhaps every Sunday ought to be a Sunday that we celebrate mothers. Some will talk about the miracle mothers. They talk about Sarah and Hannah and Elizabeth, those who were considered too old to conceive and to bear a child, those who were considered to be barren. Some preachers will talk about how they were beyond childbearing years, and God miraculously blessed them. Some preachers might talk about the mighty mothers, Deborah and Esther, how that Deborah had courage and how Esther was prayerful. And through her prayerful humility, uh, God gave birth to a nation's defense. These were mighty mothers in the Bibles. Some might simply talk about a couple of magnificent mothers. Eve, the mother of all humanity. Or Mary, the mother of the savior of humanity. Uh, as I remember her today, my brothers and sisters, my mother was all of those things. All right. uh, my mother was a mighty mother. <laughs> my mother was a magnificent mother. My mother was a miraculous mother. And any other good things you can think of saying, mm -hmm. any other great things you can say, that was my mother. I remember her today, my brothers and sisters. She looked good. She cooked good. She had soft hands and strong shoulders. I remember my mother today. She was wise. She was understanding. She was protective, and she provided. As I remember my mother today, I want to pause to say to you that if you have your mother in your presence, if your mother is still here walking among the living, Make sure that you take time out to connect with your mother and tell her how wonderful she is. For God has truly done something magnificent in the creation of mothers. Have I got a witness this morning? That ought to be enough right there to give the benediction, but I have a few more words to say if you don't mind. I was watching Al Sharpton the other day, and he said something powerful that really touched my heart. Al said that when he was with Sabrina Fuller, they had called 
him to their side as their, her son, Trayvon Martin, had been murdered. They called Al Sharpton to come and stand with the family. And Al said as he was presenting, preparing to stand with the family, just as the cameras had gathered around and just as it was time to go up before the public and stand with this fuller family, he said he, Al Sharpton, received a call that his mother had just passed. True story. Al said that when he got the news about his mother, it hurt him so bad that he wanted to just turn and walk away from the Fuller family. He wanted to break from his responsibility as a, a civic leader and go and see about his own family. But Al said he couldn't do it because he knew that his mother wouldn't approve of it. My mothers, my brothers and sisters, this speaks volumes of what Al would agree with me today is the magnificence of mothers, how they instill in us something that gives us strength beyond ourselves. In our text for today, the Bible tells us about the wisdom of Solomon. Uh, Solomon's wisdom was demonstrated in these two mothers that come to him. Next time you look at the text, notice, my brothers and sisters, that the text described these two as harlots. Read it again. It says two women came to the king who were harlots. They, they were harlots, with, which meant that they were fornicators, which, which suggested that they were probably prostitutes. Two women came before the king. They were harlots. There were no men mentioned in the story that they present to the king. They simply come in connection with their babies. Two women who were harlots had no men. They come before the king, and it suggests that they were living together. They dwell together, two harlots, no man, two babies. One baby died. They came before the king. They were living together. Well, right there, they have sh three strikes against them from the beginning. They should have, they should have had an office like, uh, you know, DHS to go to instead of bothering the king. You know? they, they, they should have just sent them to some kind of social services rather than take up the king's good time Amen. with these harlot women. They, maybe they should have been sent to the Samaritan Sisters Administration or something. They, they shouldn't have been taking up this holy king, his, his good time. They should have just sent them off somewhere. Did you read it? It's in the text. Uh -huh. Two harlots, how dare they come in the king's court to present themselves before the king. Two, two harlot women. They ain't got no man nowhere. No man. They, two women, harlots, come. And how wrong is it for me right now to pass judgment? on these two women. Is that what the Bible is teaching us? About people who may not appear to be as perfect as, as we think they ought to be according to our worldview. Is that what the Bible teaches us? Does the pain of these mothers not matter because of their lifestyle? Or because of what we consider to be reckless or bad life choices? Do their pain not matter? I know it's not gospel music, but I can hear in the back of my head Tupac saying, Mother, you are appreciated. Right. My life wasn't like the lives described in the Bibles, but Mama, you are appreciated. Before we judge these women, let's see, let's see if maybe God is trying to teach us something by including this story in the Bible and associating it with the wisdom of Solomon. So the decision is left to the king. One baby, two harlots, what to do? God gave Solomon the wisdom to deal with this situation. He said, bring my sword. Bring me the baby, bring my sword. And I'll just cut the baby in half. And I'll give each one of you half, since you can't agree on whose baby it is. 
And the real mother shouted out, no, you can see this situation. No, don't hurt the baby. Just give the baby to her. Finally, this morning, my brothers and sisters, this story reminds me of the magnificence of motherhood. This story reminds me of the love of a mother for her child, of the willingness of a real mother to make sacrifices. This story reminds me of the knowledge that a mother has, that God has done something miraculous within her and enabled her to bring life into this world. Maybe not because she made all the right decisions. Maybe it was not because she never made any bad choices. Maybe it was not because she had such wonderful virtue. The miracle and mercy of God is revealed in how he takes the ordinary, how he takes the fallible, how he takes the broken and sometimes the bitter people and shower them with his grace and his mercy. How he loves them back into wholeness. And doesn't that sound just like a mother? Amen. The magnificence of motherhood is reflected, my brothers and sisters, in the life, uh, uh, or it lies within the story that Mary, the mother of Jesus, tells there in the Magnificat. Luke chapter 1, verse 46, when she realized that she was pregnant with the Savior of the world, mm -hmm. after the Holy Ghost had spoken unto her and she began to feel the baby within her, Mary didn't say how wonderful I have been. Mary didn't say how, how wonderful, how good I have lived, how deserving I am of this. You know what Mary said? Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord story is told, my brothers and sisters, of a little girl who had to recite a line in a play at the church. She had worked to memorize her line in the play, and the time had come for her to give her line before the church. The little girl got up and went before the church, and as she got out in front of the crowd, the sight of all of those eyes peering at her made her quite nervous and all of a sudden she went blank and forgot her lines her mother seated close in the front began to try to mouth the words to her try to give her a hint of what she was supposed to say but the little girl couldn't get it the mother then began pointing and trying to make hints so that the little girl's memory could be jogged so that she would know what to say before the crowd the little girl still couldn't get it. Finally, the mother got up and went to the little girl and whispered over in her ear. The mother said, I am the light of the world. <laughs> the little girl lit up. Her face lit up with a smile. Her confidence began to exude. The little girl then stood up and said, my mama is the light of the world. <laughs> Well, my brothers and sisters, that is the magnificence that God has created in motherhood. So many things I could say about this illustration of the wisdom of Solomon. And right there in the midst of Solomon's wisdom is a story about mothers. Did you notice how the story mentions there was three days before the baby died? Did you notice? how the story mentions that one son, the living son, was replaced, uh, replaced, took the place of the dead son. How the story talks about how that one mother had to give up her son and the other mother took the son that was supposed to be dead. Kind of reminds me of another story in the Bible about a son, about a son that was born, not to a perfect person, not to want to be worshipped, born to an ordinary girl, uh -huh. a girl that wasn't quite fit for motherhood. She wasn't even of age, had known no man. Right. Reminds me of a story of a woman that didn't even know that God had a plan for her life. A woman for whom they had wrote a song, Mary, did you know? 
with your baby boy would someday walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy would someday make you new? And the child that you delivered would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know? This wonderful story, my brothers and sisters, marks the magnificence of mothers. And once more, I say to you this morning, Happy Mother's Day. And if you can speak to your mother by all means, do everything in your power to wrap your arms around her and let her know how magnificent she truly is. And if you can't speak to her physically, know this, that the magnificence of the mind of God has created a way so that long after this life and this world is over, you'll be able, if you are a believer in Jesus who is a Christ, if you can accept the gift that God gave when he gave his son, if you can confess that you are a sinner and believe that his son is the savior of the world, if you can accept the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ, that he died, was buried, and rose on the third day, if you can believe that, one day, that's why I got a smile on my face. One day, I'm going to see my mama again. God bless you. The doors of the church.